funny how you saying that now more so. You I'm not super interested in being a grandmother, but I find myself being left behind. <laughs> and like, what was that? Hello everyone, welcome back to DMD Daughter Mama Dialogue with Kyra and my co-host, Mama Cat. And so um, before we get into um, today's discussion, just remember in the, in the video, just remember to like it if you like what we're talking about today, subscribe and comment your thoughts on what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And as usual, what we're going to do is we're going to start talking about our obsessions what we've been really into today our thoughts ideas what's in the media whatever really um <laughs> so my yeah. do you have anything that you've been interested in this past week well this past week actually i think i was talking to you about it the greater cleveland urban film festival has been going on this past week and i used to volunteer with them i love working with the organization wonderful group of people and this past week, I got to watch um, a film called Six Triple Eight, which actually is about the sole African American female company during World War II called the Women Army Corps. And I wanted to watch it actually because I remember my my dad's mom telling me about how she almost signed up for for WAC. I don't know. I don't like the fact that it's called whack. But anyway, she almost signed up for it. And, and it just made me think about her. She was, she was a very strong, um, very strong woman, um, very industrious. And when I listened to the interviews of the women there in the movie, it, they reminded me of her. So that was part of my plan. I like watching movies, so, but that in particular. Great Grandma Pearl. Yes. Oh, I just want to know. That was, yeah, it's probably, whack, they, well, whack didn't, we didn't say whack back then, so it didn't mean nothing, but now I'm saying whack, like whack, like that's know, a bad acronym. I don't like that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, I guess I've been looking forward to having time to, t uh, self-care at my, my day job. Um, I took a week off have a mm -hmm. week off so I was excited about it so I didn't think about the whole aspect of self-care mm -hmm. like it's like really taking time to take care of myself until recently I'm like I'm gonna get my hair done mm -hmm. and I got my hair done by my mama <laughs> she just what was that <laughs> what <laughs> okay but yeah my mom did my hair um and so I was her guinea pig to do feed and feed her braids in a way to yeah. feed in a little bit. But I, I think learned it came, something new. It came out really well, so I'm proud of her. Thank you. And Thank you. and I think I look cute if I do say my so myself. So yeah. Okay. So <laughs> calm down. It, so it's just like just self care and um, you know, make putting certain things that I want to do or I need to do in priority make it more of a priority to just take care mm -hmm. of myself and take care of my well-being. So, yeah, I'm excited about that. And I guess that's what I would call my obsession. Mm -hmm. so, so, yeah. Can I add one more thing? Yeah. Um, I'm so proud of you for going with me on our walk, very important walk today. Y'all! Yeah. <laughs> first of all... <laughs> Anyway, I'm not going to get on her right now, but yeah, we walked almost 10,000 steps today and in an age of pandemic, COVID-19, that is just such a wonderful thing. Yeah, I ended up spending the night with my, mom, my mama's house and mm -hmm. we went on a walk and I knew she wanted to go for a long walk, but she kept going, taking me to all these different places mm -hmm. for over an hour. I was walking, I was hungry. I mean, I'm glad we walked, but... When I'm hungry, it's hard. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to get her to do anything when she's hungry. No, so. well, yeah. No, yeah, it's I not like, it's that. just, it just becomes more of a point forefront of my mind. Like, at some point, I know I had to have some food, but it was good. So, a lesson to us parents, even with grown kids, grown children, 
feed your kids before you ask them to do something. I mean, I could feed myself. I had some, but I didn't. I just didn't really expect myself to be as hungry as it. it. So feed your children. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> so now I'm going. This is part two of the video dating but your children are grown something along those lines of what i put in the last video <laughs> but this mm -hmm. is part two um so we ended off talking about we were talking about the fact of i guess me starting to date some of the oldest and more so about when i was older like uh, late high school years to college but moving here living at home while dating in college too. And so like kind of like my mom's, how she felt about it going through the experience, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, can you, we didn't get too much into it. <laughs> we kind of arguing about dates, <laughs> but like um, when, I guess in general, why did you feel like it was hard to deal with the fact that Giselle and I, or my sister and I, were dating. Um, mm, well, let me think about that for a second. I was not expecting you to word that question like that. But, because that's a loaded question. Was it that you felt like like you wanted to protect us? Or, or, um, or is it more so you felt that... Um, when we dated, because I know specifically for me, I made certain decisions that you didn't always like. Mm -hmm. So was it more so because of that that you had a hard time dealing um, with some of the decisions about dating when it came to dating? Um, you know, for anyone who will watch this, um, I think me raising you and your sister as a single parent had a lot to do with it. Mm -hmm. And I felt, um, I felt a lot of responsibility on my shoulders to make sure that um, I knew who you were hanging out with and what were the intentions of the young men who would be asking to take you out of you know out of my home mm -hmm. somewhere where I couldn't be you know be there so. Um, there's just so much going on out here and um, I know what I've been through as a teenager and you know I forget forget what other people say yes if you've had any kind of um, bad experiences in your past that they you know they say they impact you know how you feel or you haven't healed from them because you can't forget them well I'm not trying to forget my bad experiences I had good experiences but I had bad experiences and I think like any parent I want to make sure that I talked to you I I wanted to make sure that I spoke to you both about you know things to look out for and um, of course I had to let you learn how to make your own decisions so you're old enough so I had to no choice I honestly feel like, well, I do remember there were some conversations that were had, but I did, I never really felt like you were very, um, like, hands-on when it came to dating. What do you mean? For us, well, for me specifically, like, you need to be home at this point or, or this time, or you should date a guy that's this, this, and this. Oh, he, <laughs> this, you know, like, people have, like, certain requirements and certain like just be more involved about picking someone that I date or be extra judgy or things of that nature I don't remember her like even if there was a guy that I brought home um that was interested or like we were dating I don't remember you being that like that <laughs> let's give everybody a little bit of information here you all didn't really date until you were like 18 but i know but <laughs> so but no but that's so being... <laughs> so just to let people know you are 18 and now now it's you know but i i guess maybe that's why because i felt oh they're 18 they're not gonna it's funny that you they're said gonna make their own decisions but i i couldn't even get them out of the house well, in high Before school. Before that, yeah. 
I mean, but that, with that being said, though, I know I've heard um, people who have parents who are a little bit more, like, have more opinions about the people that they've dated. And, I mean, you 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 would say certain things like, well, yeah, but you wouldn't be like, I don't think you should date this person. This doesn't make sense. Or, But then again, I think also with that being said... I'm surprised you're saying that. No, I'm really, I'm very surprised. What do you What do you mean? Explain. <laughs> Don't go into yeah, names. I can think but... of a particular, maybe one or two people who I have had definite opinions about. You kind of maybe said one time, and maybe, and, like... and I've had definite opinions about them. See, it's not just the the parents we can get. No, I don't think you had, but to me, you never seemed like you had strong opinions. You always let me make, like, you've never tried to, well, you've never tried to push me to make a different type of decision, I feel like. You weren't, like. I'm glad you remember that. We can move on. <laughs> Let's move on. Because, mm -hmm. Do you have a question? Do I don't have a question. You, I, I know you I really don't. I remember you were talking about you had. Um, you you had com you, you wanted to talk about friendships, um, friendship and dating, friendships and, and dating. Yes, I think friendship is very important. My friendships and dating. I thought you meant in general. Well, I don't know you. I rem well, we don't have to talk about it. That's okay. No, you brought it up already. So, do you feel that certain friendships, if you have Okay, first of all, do you believe it's possible to be friends with a guy, have a platonic friendship with a guy without having had any relations? Like, yeah, sure, somebody could be yeah. interested, but you believe, okay. Yes, I do. Do you believe you can be platonic friends with a guy and then have, be able to date somebody else? To be, I'm like, you never dated that person, for example, but you decided to date somebody else. Yeah. Okay, now do you believe <laughs> moving forward you can date a guy that you dated? I mean, you can be friends with a guy that you dated, and then sit and just and be friends and just be friends. That is tricky. I think that's very tricky. I don't know how you do it, but I for me, I think that's very tricky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I do because. We kind of had a little bit of conversation about this before. Um, I guess it depends on the relationship that you've had with that person. If yeah. you've dated that person before, I think it depends on the type of dating, dating that you, um, the type of dating relationship you've had with that person. Yeah, I think. Um, I don't think it can happen with every single person mm -hmm. um, because it's all about, yeah, it depends on your dating relationship, how important the friendship is to that person. And also if you're friends to that person, but expect to dating other, to have been dating other people, you know, and you also expect to be honest with you know, the person you're dating, like you're still friends with someone you've been in a relationship with, is very important to have boundaries. Mm -hmm. And so, and I'm not going to say I've always been the best at, like boundaries, for example, saying like, you know, if when you were together, you guys spoke a lot. And mm -hmm. even as friends, you guys really enjoy each other's conversation. Now, if you still have heavy conversations a lot of times and you're starting to date someone else mm -hmm. the other person will be like why are you calling why is this person calling so much i know y'all friends yeah. and the person could be you know maybe pretty cool about you dating you know being friends with someone of the opposite gender mm -hmm. but what i've learned is that right. it's best to have boundaries mm -hmm. like no Man, I'm a I'ma hit you up like next month, once this next month or whatever. I'm a you know, maybe talk here and there. Mm -hmm. Or you know, certain conversations mm -hmm. maybe off limits, things of that nature. Right. Right. I, I agree. 
I agree with the importance of having boundaries. And that's something I'm still working on. And when I say I'm still working on it, I mean I'm working on communicating my expectations, you know, what I'm looking for in a relationship. I think, um, I think, wow, for years, I think I've kind of been more or less someone who just, like, I might say something, but I eventually kind of give up, which I don't think you can be the type of person who gives up on what you what you need out of a relationship because I think that's probably the beginning of the relationship going south because mm-hmm. you, you're giving up what you want and then you're dissatisfied and then you may be resentful and then you're not giving what you need to the relationship so kind of yeah. like accommodating being a little bit too accommodating right right and uh yeah i think if you're being overly accommodating there's a difference between being accommodating and compromising i think it's really important to um maybe define the difference between compromising and accommodating i maybe in each instance what do you where, feel? where you feel like you got you have to do something you wouldn't normally do or agree to is it accommodating or is it compromising so yeah what do you feel is when do you think well people use compromise in a positive term like give and take right mm-hmm. but when do you think what when do you think accommodating and, and compromising it turn into a negative thing? Um, well, first of all, going back to what you were saying about having boundaries, I think boundaries are um, boundaries are what what do you define as boundaries? Like what what you want, what you would do, what you wouldn't do, what what you I guess more or less what you want and what you don't want. From a relationship don't cross this line if you do a b and c that's a deal breaker we're not you yeah. know we're not going to be together anymore that's kind yeah. of what i'm thinking of as a boundary however you may also see boundary as like your framework you may decide that um like i was watching um listening to actually a relationship coach who was suggesting that um, the, if the guy's really interested in, in the, in the woman that he should speak to her for a, long, a per- certain period of time daily, well, that would be nice. But, um, so if I say to somebody I really like, I want you to call me every day. Yeah. I, I mean, to me telling, telling him, mm-hmm. you know, I really would like you know, to be able to communicate on a regular basis. Yeah. If he doesn't call me on Wednesday and Thursday, <laughs> yeah, you know, and, um, you know, and he, I know he has the time to call me. So I might be like, hmm. so when do you think it's, so that's a comp, like that's part of the compromise. Well, the uh, not accommodating. No, like no, I, but I haven't gotten to that point yet. I haven't yeah. gotten to that point yet. So I, I I, think if I say, well, suppose this guy has a type of job. Maybe he's in the lab all day. Maybe he's working, finishing his graduate degree. Maybe, you know, and I know that he has a bit of time, mm-hmm. you know, and that he might really be straining to try to contact me and spend time with me. To compromise, I might compromise and say, well, you know, maybe we'll make up time later on in the week or maybe we'll just talk for five minutes for 10 minutes or something like that. Mm-hmm. To me, that is a compromise. Now, if I, over being overly accommodating, I'm sorry, I'm losing my voice. If I'm being overly accommodating and I'm just like, he can do whatever, you know, he can, don't bother calling me. I'll be fine. We haven't talked to each other for a week or whatever. And and this is just an example, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I think that's being overly accommodating because regardless, that person may have 
a whole lot of stuff to do. You may ha have a whole lot of stuff to do, but That's true. you know, you both decide to be in a relationship. What do you think? How do you think this thing is going to run? <laughs> yeah, I think growing up, like dating is, has taught me a lot more than my friendships about how to, to, um, kind of figure out boundaries. And it's a slow thing that I've learned because I was, I've dated in different ways. I've dated long distance, mm -hmm. um, in the same place, um, people in the same, just, just in different ways. And so, um, I've, I'm learning how to put boundaries now, mm -hmm. but I remember, and I don't even remember if you remember, but I remember in college, I was dating this guy for three months who lived on the other side of town, who lived on the west side. You don't, know. you don't, I have no you idea. never met him. That was the thing. And I already kind of like, didn't, like, I don't, I didn't bring people to you like right away. I knew anybody that I brought to you, like either I was dating for a while or like we had really been good friends for a while and then brought over. Mm -hmm. He wasn't on that list yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and even in the midst of dating, I realized like three months was too much longer than it really should have been. But it was to the point where I was in college. So I was downtown and I didn't have a car. So I would take the bus over to where he was, which was just one bus. Mm -hmm. But now to get to school every day, it took me two buses from where we are and you were living here. Mm -hmm. So I would go over there and then I would take three buses to get home and walk down that long street. By yourself. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. it was, it didn't even take that for me to like, it was to the point, I don't know, like I hold on, I don't like, I realize I don't like feeling like I'm abandoning people or I don't want, like I want to try to work things out. And I think that was part of it, but there needed, to, I, I didn't set boundaries and say like, you need to do this because I can't, uh, that's a lot. I'm, I'm in school. Mm -hmm. I'm also working part time. And then I'm the one who's coming to see you 70% of the time, like, we may meet somewhere, but he wasn't coming all the way over here. Which, now, looking back, I'm glad he didn't. Because mm -hmm. I'm glad he never met y'all. So. <laughs> <laughs> well. Okay. We're not mm -hmm. going to say. It was, it was, I mean, I wish him well. I wish him the best. But it was just not. It was, it became a very toxic situation. So, by the time we broke up, after we broke up, because I broke us up, but conversations afterward it was it became very toxic mm -hmm. so well i'm glad you shared that you have refreshed my memory and i'm thankful i have a daughter who eventually figures out <laughs> that you deserve better anyhow uh listening to your story made me think about um how we all you know we we may talk about setting boundaries but I think the whole process comes from learning experiences. Yeah. And so you think about, I don't want to say we can be naive, but when you learn that something doesn't work for you, then yeah. you adjust your boundaries. Yeah. I even think, well, you know what? It's funny. Well, there's two things I wanted to say. One thing about when you were talking about, um, you know, that relationship expert, what was his name? Plug him in. What was his name? Stefan. Do I do that? Yes. Yeah, I've listened to several. Oh, okay. Never mind. Whatever. I listen to different ones, people too. But the whole point is, is like, um, well, I don't think, not all women okay, want. I'm sorry. Stefan speaks, Tony Gaskins. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> two different, two different people. Come on. Go ahead. But, um, one was by, uh. No, the fact of habit, calling someone every day. Now, every, every woman doesn't want that. So, I think right. it's, so the point, it sounds like making, just like communicating expectations and wants, because every woman doesn't want that. I, of course, I do believe if you really into that person, they into you, y'all going to communicate more, but everyone doesn't need that. And then, mm -hmm. but my second thing is, before you saw is, I think women tend to, to do a little bit more accommodating than men. There, I mean, not to say men never mm -hmm. do, but I feel like. At least in the beginning instance, I think, because I know I'm very, like, go out my way. I'll do a little bit more, maybe reach out a little bit more, um, maybe 
y'all just do something a little bit more, put more effort into it than the person, than the guy. Mm -hmm. That's all. Would you be surprised if you ran into a guy who put in more effort than you? Would that throw you off? Honestly, yes. And I don't be, a, cause, you know, <laughs> that brings the whole question of like being independent. Because I remember like when the guy is trying to be nice to me, people have said like, I want to buy you something, but we're not dating or anything. And I'm like, I can buy my own stuff. <laughs> so I think that, in that, which I could think could be a block. So, mm -hmm. and not to say like, like somebody that I recently dated, like we had this conversation before, like he would, he mentioned about doing certain things and I just, I was just kind of like halfway didn't believe him. Mm -hmm. And I think, not to say he didn't put effort in, but I think also that maybe changed his perspective about me. Like, I don't know. I don't think he's like stopped giving uh -huh. necessarily. It was just like less inclined to, I don't know. I feel like you can block your own blessings. So. <laughs> Well, yeah, I think you can block your own blessings, but maybe he was, maybe he felt put off by your response. Not necessarily that, you know, I, I'm sure you would have appreciated his attention, you know, what he was trying to do if you understood his motivation, maybe. I wasn't, I just wasn't used to it. I wasn't, int I wasn't used to certain things, so... That's the whole thing about accommodating, because I was so used to accommodating what other people do and not receiving as much mm -hmm. as I was putting in then um that and I and maybe I should have had these conversations when I was younger when I started dating because with you because then don't put it all on me no no it what I'm, not. I'm not saying putting it all on you I'm putting it on myself because I'm saying I didn't ask questions enough to see if certain things were right because for one thing I did what I wanted to do anyway a little bit I mean but let me ask you this. Did you, do you think, do you remember having those types of questions when you were in high school? In high school? No, because I didn't really date in high school by the time, because mm -hmm. I didn't, I wasn't in the situation to know what I should ask by okay. the time, because you, you were studying, right? I mean, yeah. look, even though I didn't date, I dated one person <laughs> yeah. in high school. I had male friends and I'd be on the phone. But it wasn't, it would just be like regular conversation. So I would, I, I won't say I would study. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'll accept that answer. <laughs> but, when, but no, but even for having male friends, it, I think it helped me kind of have an idea of what I wanted to, ex, what to expect. But it's not the same as like really being in a relationship with someone and actually being in that situation. Okay. Because you accommodate for people that you like. You know, I think what we all should do is my daughter should be on the lookout for a nice man for me to date uh, somebody who they think would make a nice husband. They should be on the lookout for me. You know, scream, you know, check them out. Wait. The background check. And I should be able to do the same thing for my daughters. Like, if I see a nice young man and yes. I ask him... It's okay for me to ask questions because he he's from my daughters. He, they don't pick up on that. Like, so what, you know, so they, I, I think the guy is not going to put up too many walls because it's someone else asking the question. So I, I think that's what, that's what should happen. With that being said, though, with the, actually that brings another point because we're running up on time, mm -hmm. but... When do you think is an appropriate time to bring home a guy to you? Like when I'm in a when I'm already in the relationship, just before the relationship, how far into the relationship do you think I should bring a guy to you? I think as soon as possible so I can screen him. Cuz I didn't bring I didn't bring the last <laughs> and person to you. Nip at all. that in the bud. Like so I can meet him. You know, mm -hmm. Yeah, so, ask him questions, see if he can express himself appropriately. Um, see if, see if he's good around the family, because look, come on, let's all be realistic. So uh, like, you got, that person's going to be spending time with your family better at. So like, you mean, doing. so, so like, but we have to have a reason. I can't, I'm not just going to drop by. I'm not just going to be like, we think of reasons like have a dinner or something. That's right. Okay. Celebrate. I, obviously, as y'all, as y'all can tell, I never really 
my dating experiences, it hasn't really included, like, you met, well, two people that I've dated technically, because it was the guy in high school, and then mm -hmm. the the only relationship that lasted more than a year for me, <laughs> that guy, but, um, I'm not even gonna say grandma needs some grandbaby, I'm just gonna this is, that. It's funny how you saying that now more so. You I'm not like, super interested in being a grandmother, but I find myself being left behind. <laughs> and like, like oh, so everybody it's... else is, some Grand... of us, some are a few years from being a great grandparent. I'm like, gee, am I ever Well, if that makes you children? feel any better, my no. dad, who has, <laughs> who has, I have other siblings, my older sister, well, we... Like, he don't, my granddad, my dad doesn't have any grandkids either. We didn't have to bring him up. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay, well, we are, <laughs> we are towards the end of this video. So I wish him well. Okay, go ahead. Um. Yeah, so we are at the end of this video. You guys, if you have any comments um, about what, about uh, what we have said about you know if you have had a child who's grown who's dating and how you kind of dealt with it or if you were that person everyone's been that person who has to deal with who is dating and maybe have to deal with their parents like yeah. there's a, a little bit of rocky relationship yeah. so comment below about your thoughts now again just like subscribe and we will see you next video bye Bye.